how do derivatives work in the real world? Okay, so remember when we all took calculus and calculus taught us not just about mathematics, but, uh, but about the change in things in mathematics, the rise over the run. So what derivatives are in the world of finance is they allow you to make money or protect yourself by betting on the change in the growth rate uh, or, or lack thereof of stocks. Okay, and here's how they work. So you can buy what's called a call option and you can buy it and it will basically cost you a small amount compared to the stock price. If the stock goes up a lot, then you make a lot of money. If the stock doesn't go up, then you lose this little amount you put in. The same thing with a put. A put is like a, a, a call, but it's the opposite. Right? If you buy a put, what happens is you're betting that that stock is going to go down. And if it goes down, you make money. That's how it works. And in the hedge fund world, and a hedge fund is basically like a mutual fund, except hedge funds can buy stocks and bet against stocks, meaning short stocks. And they call it a hedge fund because if you look at your backyard and pretend you have a hedge, a hedge protects your backyard. So a lot of hedge funds will use puts and calls to make money or to mitigate or decrease the volatility in their portfolio. Now, there's been some very frightening uses of puts that nobody talks about. And I'm, I'm not a conspiracy person usually, but, but hear me out here, please. It has to do with 9-11. So 9-11, after a couple of weeks, we went back to work. We were allowed back to work at, at Gold, when I worked at Goldman. I was on the 49th floor of One Market Plaza, or One New York Plaza, um, at the very bottom of Manhattan. Scary time, scary time. And I remember we went back to work and I used a Bloomberg terminal at the time. And I don't use, and Bloomberg, by the way, is software you can use uh, to access finance stuff. You don't need it though. And I used to pay thousands of dollars for Bloomberg every month for my team um, when I ran my own company. I don't do that because you can get all that stuff for free through Yahoo Finance. But what happened was this. After 9-11, I was just curious. And I went on Bloomberg and I typed in OMON, which is options monitor, which basically means, hey, what, how, what's the volume? How many people are buying these puts or calls? I looked at how many people were buying these puts or calls, meaning derivatives, on American Airlines, United Airlines, Delta, Continental. And what happened was this. The put volume, meaning how much people were investing to bet that American Airlines, Delta, United, uh, Continental went down. The put volume before 9-11, the week before, was at a record high. So somebody made a fortune off of all those airline stocks going down. You could look at it. You know, go, go check out the historical volume if you want, um, which, which was frightening. And nobody talks about that anymore. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway... Um, Whenever you see a big increase, and this is a separate topic not to do with 9-11. And, and, and by the way, we, we think that somebody must have financed part of 9-11 with, with, with puts. Okay, we, we don't know where. We don't know where. Uh, and then after that, the Patriot Act was created uh, so that the U.S. government could actually, you know, do a little bit more due diligence to find out about money laundering and, and all that sort of thing. If, if, you, if you see something or hear something, say something, which we had to do on Wall Street, which is the right call. All right. Let me put 9-11 aside now. So you can use and look at puts or calls and it can signal something. So if all of a sudden you see a massive increase in the volume in calls, meaning people betting a little amount that a stock's gonna go up a lot, that could signal that there might be something interesting coming soon. And the SEC also, the Securities and Exchange Commission, if they see hedge funds, and a lot of them are crooked, if not all of them, but if they see that hedge funds buy a lot more calls on something, then they might investigate them because they might know something, meaning insider information. And what happens is this, if, if you know something about a stock that nobody else knows, you can't trade on it. It's criminal actually, you can go to jail, just like Martha Stewart went to jail. And so what happens is the Securities and Exchange Commission they watch to see if, if hedge funds buy huge amounts uh, in calls or puts for that matter. And it can signal something to, uh, to the general public. One more quick thing.
Speaking of airlines, so there's a great airline in America, which is called Southwest. The ticker is LUV because their, their home airfield uh, in Texas is called Lovejoy, I think, or Love, Love Air, whatever. So what Southwest did was many years ago, they looked at their expenses and they're forecasting their model. And they figured out that um, obviously a, a big percentage of their expenses, oil, obviously. And so what they did was they hedged oil by doing this. They used derivatives so that for like a decade in the future, the only thing they would ever pay for oil is 30 bucks a barrel. Then oil went up to way over a hundred bucks a barrel. And Southwest did not, um, uh, they actually cut prices. And it was predatory. They almost forced other airlines out of business. And so big companies can also use derivative instruments in order to hedge out their exposure to something that has a big impact on their financial statements like oil.